The second question is that uh, the Ahmadis in Pakistan are very small in number. Why the majority of the Pakistani people did not accept the promised Messiah if he was true in his claim? If he was true in his claim, the majority must have rejected him. Because it is the Sunnah of Allah Ta'ala. In cases of all prophets, the majority always rejects them because they are true. But false claimants have their own following along with them. And a large number of their people do follow them because they make the claim in consultation with the whole community. So the sign which is a sign of truth is being quoted as a sign of falsehood. Remember, Hazrat Rasulullah was Rasulun Ila was a prophet for whole for the whole mankind. Was he not? Was he accepted by the whole mankind? Or is is he still accepted by the whole mankind? Out of every five persons in the world, even today, after 1400 years have passed, only one claims to have believed in him. But most of them are just nominal Muslims. So he's arguing very strangely against uh, the argument of the Holy Quran and against the Sunnah of Allah. <coughs> Allah Ta'ala. Let me now ask a counter question from the Somalian who has raised this objection. For the time being, let's return to the age before Ahazul. What would be his verdict about uh, Hazrat Isa Islam if he had uh, shared his age? A very large majority of his people, out of all rejected him outright. And this situation continued for quite, a, quite some time. So what would be his verdict about Hadith al-Islam? Was he true or false? Then he should, I draw his attention to Hazrat Nuh. Almost all his people, even including his son, rejected him outright. Was it true? And what about Hazrat Luth? Was he a true prophet of God according to his criterion? So he has made his own criterion which, is, which contradicts the criteria put by the Holy Quran. After this, I'll speak a little bit again about uh, the Pakistani non-Ahmadis who have rejected his Muslim Islam. Those, that large majority of Pakistan which has rejected his Muslim Islam, are they good Muslims? How has Allah treated them after their rejection? These are the two questions. If you read any newspaper which is published from Pakistan, daily you will find such news items that everybody is murdering everybody else, you know. <laughs> and everybody is stealing every other person's properties. And the courts are full of lies and misappropriation of other people's rights is, has become the law in the country. And every law has some exceptions, very few. And the, both the government and the opposition are being criticized by the newspapers as 
the biggest robbers that the country ever had. Uh, are these the people who are worthy of respect if they reject the prophet of the time? What is the meaning of their rejection? Thank God they have rejected. <laughs> <laughs> and after their rejection, how did Allah treat them? If they had rejected the wrong prophet, Allah should have been very happy with them. But what is happening to Pakistan's economy, everything in the streets, everywhere, the peace has been totally lifted by Allah from that country. So is this Allah's prayer shown to them after they have rejected their wrong prophet? Or is it the wrath of Allah? So he should take into consideration all these things. Right?